Oh, hi. I would do the stupid Vsauce Michael here intro, but I can't duck below the frame here. We are in my living room. Why, you might ask? Well, this is where I listen to music. I dim the lights, I light a candle, I pour myself a drink, and I lean back in my couch and listen. And today, I am listening to my favorite artists. You guys. That's not true. I mean, the favorite artists are part about me listening to you. Today, we're listening to your demos. I asked you guys on Instagram to send me tracks for feedback, and then I promptly disappeared for two weeks because university is killing me right now. In school, all you do is a bunch of crap for other people. But here we are, nonetheless. It's a Sunday night. I was planning on sitting down and blasting some tunes anyway, so I figured I might as well set up a camera and get this thing over with. So here goes. Cheers for my first feedback session. All right, first up is Tomas Peñate with All Bad. Here we go. Whoa. I wasn't expecting indie pop. That hook is already stuck in my head. I love this songwriting. The phrasing and melodic variation, like from Bar to Bar, really nice. The vocal performance is pretty good. Um, not too sure about the vocal processing. It sounds really artificial. I don't know if that's the vibe he's going for, but yeah. Whoa. Okay. Wow, this pre chorus goes hard. I love that gritty electric. Part. go okay okay i'm i'm gonna pause it i'm gonna make a prediction this could go one of two ways number one is it blows up into this huge super wide arena type vibe and number two is that he strips it down completely and we get just the bass and the drums and the vocals in a really like dry way and from the intro i'm gonna guess that the chorus here is number two so let's check this out you know it wasn't all bad, it wasn't all bad. I called it. You know it wasn't all bad, this is such a vibe. I love this. You know it wasn't all bad, it wasn't all bad. You know it wasn't all bad, it wasn't all bad. Does it just bad. keep going? Alright, sick idea. That hook is a f***ing earworm. Holy sh**. I don't know if this is a full track or not, but the hook drags on for quite a bit. Um, I feel like the chorus is too long and I'm missing like a second verse and a bridge to kind of spice things up a little bit. But if this is just a demo and this is what you have so far, it's a, it's a fantastic starting point and you should totally follow up on this and complete the song and send it to me when it's done because I love this. The instrumental is really solid. If I were you, I'd look into getting a real bass player or maybe even just a better bass synth plugin because right now it sounds a little too artificial and too cheap if that's what you're going for you know you do you man i just prefer the sound of a more natural sounding bass i think my least favorite part of this are the vocals but that's not to say that they're bad because they are not but they are in my opinion what's keeping this demo back from being radio ready you're a good singer it's just the processing that kind of irks me the verse feels a little bit too wet. It sounds like you're singing into the microphone from the other side of the room. The pitch correction is also a little bit inconsistent. I feel as though it goes from a little pitchy, a little bit off at times throughout the verse, but then it goes to like this 100% auto-tune, zero millisecond reaction time for the pre-chorus and the chorus. And it's a vibe, like that 100% auto-tune is a sound. And with the harmonies that come in later on, it definitely sounds digital and kind of like robotic but if that's what you're going for that's that's cool i just for an indie pop rock track like this i would love a more natural sounding vocal speaking of those harmonies i would like them more pulled back i think i prefer the lead vocal melody to stand out more and then the harmonies could be kind of more of a background element as opposed to being as loud and as prominent as they are now especially for the second half of the chorus i mean it's it's an interesting effect i just wish it was more natural sounding and not as digital and processed as it sounds now the instrumental is super dope great job on that i feel like the hats are a little bit too loud throughout the whole thing the high hats are kind of piercing and take away some of the impact from the kick and the snare and the the whole thing feels very mono. This kind of goes for the vocals too. I feel like you should take more advantage of stereo panning. Just making it wider would go a long way. Still, fantastic demo. I'm kind of a little bit pissed off I didn't write that chorus myself because it's really good. Next up is Mo. Here we go. Ooh, 
spooky. I love that double harmonic major progression thing you got going on here. Such an Arabic feel to it. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of the Lanaira Desert theme from Skyward Sword. It's even the same key. Cool. Whoa. These staccato strings and brass stabs and everything, it feels so incredibly cinematic, especially with that choir. This is terrifying. I love it. Feels like I'm watching the trailer for The Mummy. <laughs> It goes so hard. Really interesting sound design. I like that crash. It sounds like an exhale, like someone's breathing. Nice. Super dope stuff. Good job, Mo. This is a vibe for sure. I feel like I should be running for my life from like an Egyptian themed mech robot thing. One thing I am missing is a melodic theme. The chords are super nice, but most people don't really think about chords too much. I don't know if you're planning to add vocals to this. If so, the vocals would be carrying the melody. But if not, if this is an instrumental, definitely aim for some kind of melody to slap on top of this that you can come back to throughout the drop and everything. The double harmonic major scale is your friend here. It's the scale that every single Western taught Hollywood composer uses when they're too lazy to come up with something original for like, any kind of soundtrack that they want to sound foreign. <laughs> All right, so next up is Major Bajor. <laughs> Good name. With Undescribable. Let's check this out. All right. Hype Super Sauce, 4x4 Sidechain. This is a vibe. Even my candle's going crazy. It kind of feels like two intros, but we're building up, so that's cool. Nice little arpeggio going on here. Building up. Nice drum fill. Pretty catchy melody. This reminds me of like listening to Avicii in middle school. That little whistle kind of upper octave layer there, nice. melody good stuff still on that same chord progression Ooh, okay I was expecting the same drop halftime all right <laughs> the audience applause in the background is getting me here. Ooh, clever stuff with that little stereo animation there, bringing it out into mono so that the impact with the stereo width feels way wider and more powerful. Good stuff. This beat is a little bit confusing. Not entirely sure what this kick pattern is. Double time though. All right. 
this the outro? Yeah, I'm not too sure about the double time outro. It's interesting, but typically you'd want to like bring the hype down, not double it up. But whew, all right. Rave time is over and my candle is actually producing. Wow, I'm scared my fire alarm's gonna go off. Okay, so you've got your basic house track, right? It's repeating melodies, it's a predictable chord progression, it's four to the floor kick patterns, it's a tried and true formula and it's music for the masses. And it works because it's simple. And I get what you're going for with this second drop. I understand that you'd wanna freshen things up with a cool, interesting new drum pattern. I just don't think it's necessary. As it sounds right now, the drum pattern doesn't really give the listener any indication as to how to move, which I think is the real purpose of house music. The halftime section, the kind of trap-like part, also caught me a little bit off guard. It feels a little rushed. I think it could work if you double down on the trap, if you do like the punchy 808 kick bass and sub and like super fast trap hats, maybe even add that super cliche like trap vocal chant, the yeah, yeah. That could be fun. Also, as a final note, don't forget your low end. If I were you, I would go through this whole track and just pitch every single MIDI in every audio down like six semitones. I'd probably also add the same bass layer, but an octave down for the drop and a more present sub throughout the whole thing. Most house music I've come across before is typically in the key of like F or G, usually because it allows for the bass to go low enough to really rumble without low, with without being so low as to sounding distorted and gross. All in all though, it's definitely house. Like it's it's catchy, it's repetitive, it's fun, it makes you want to dance. I say good job. Thanks for sending it in. All right, you know what? I'm gonna cut this so it doesn't burn like that. Ow, I'm an idiot. Is that better? I don't catch more, you just wait and see. All right, who's next? Let's check out Nibor with To The Judge, feet Shmorgel. It started all right. Nice little substituted major there, cool. Was a smile. I like that. You turned me up like a flame of desire. You couldn't hide nice vocals in disguise for a while out of sight. The vocal melody takes me back to like moves like Jagger by Maroon 5. But a liar. Now I don't need a real view mirror. Ooh, new chords. Ah, back to that major. Good stuff. <laughs> now you're begging so pathetic. Yeah, you were. Four three polyrhythm piano chords, absolute classic. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna get a reprise of that. I feel like we're gonna get a reprise of that melody from from the intro. Ah, there we go. More house. So much for your love. From a second. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. In Cool, cool, okay, more house. I like it. That 4-3 polyrhythm piano is a tried and true method. It's super effective, it sounds nice. It's, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's generic, but it's kind of genre defining for what this is, like the melodic house kind of thing. The thing about house music is that it's so incredibly dependent on a good melody, and you want a good melody because that's what'll inevitably get stuck inside the listener's head. I'm not saying this is a bad melody, but I think it could use a couple more drafts. It's always hard to try to pinpoint what specific parts of a melody that make you feel as though it could be better. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Melodies are hard. Good luck is what I'm saying. The mix could use some more attention too, for sure, especially throughout the drop. I find the kick a little bit too hard to hear. I think like if you were listening to this on laptop speakers, it 
would almost be hard to tell the kick is even there. You might just hear like a side chain, but not really a prominent kick. So yeah, maybe turn that up just a tad. And I want more vocal layers, especially for the hook. Give me those doubles and harmonies and lush poppy ad libs that really fill out the whole vocal space. It's a little too dry and a little too single track right now. All in all though, the vocals and the chord progression come together to form a really good starting point for what I think could be a banger. I just think there are a couple of smaller things that you guys need to look into. Okay, this is fun. I'm having fun. I'm starting to get why Jonas Aiden does this all the time. Who is next? Snow and Rob with On My Own. Let's check this out. I was on my own, walking down an empty road. Ooh, I love that piano. Very soft and lush, comforting almost. As the shadows crept in slow, I've never felt so low. Nice vocals. In an empty space. That, was that little sprinkly arc. Lovely. Couldn't leave a trace. I was searching for your grace, trying to win the race. As my body ran in place, you never missed my face. Gotta make it up. The songwriting is really good. No one's gonna make it up for me. Gotta make it up. Catchy. Okay. I can't tell if there's stereo panning on the lead or if this is just reverb automation. I know there's reverb automation for sure, but it feels like it's going between mono and stereo way more than it should. This is so cool though. that vocal belting by the way the, like on my own nice shaker All right, I'm gonna skip ahead Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on here, a lot of interesting things, especially with the reverb automations and that very bouncy bass. I love that drop, the distorted, kind of saturated feel of it. Good stuff. As for the vocals, I think they're really good. I love the emotional impact of those certain words where he takes on that rasp and kind of, yeah, the, the, the vocal performance and delivery is spot on. Songwriting wise, I really wish that hook, the gotta make it happen part before the drop was stretched out for another eight bars. It's too catchy and kind of too short right now for it to really sell itself as the hook of the song, which I think is what you're going for. I'm not sure. If it's not and I'm being stupid, I'm sorry. Also, there's this part in that section where I think you went, nobody's gonna make it happen but me. And there's something about that syllable distribution that kind of irked me. It sounds a little awkward right now. It sounds like it's a whole lot of stuff crammed into very little space. The consonants kind of just drowned out in the mix. I, I'd look into that. Another, 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 one more thing. Um, Come on, a couple more songs now and you can go to bed. You got this. One more thing, and this is really minor. There's this shaker throughout the whole track. And I think you should drop that for the first half of the drop. It sounds too muffled for it to be intentional as it is right now for the first half. And it doesn't really fill out the space until the rest of that offbeat percussion comes in for the second half of the drop. So I, I, I just drop it for the first half. I also can't make up my mind about whether or not I think that lead is too sharp in the highs. It really cuts through the mix and I love the way it sounds. I just find myself wanting to turn down the volume of the drop after having set it accordingly during the verse. This is a cool song though. Like, this is a song I would listen to. You guys did a good job. Next up, we have Blind Sight with this ID right here. Ooh, nice chord. Cool tape stop effects, that's fun. Hello, square waves. That was loud. Love these harmonies. Emotional piano time. I 
I love this bass I'm hearing creeping in now. Dude, what? This glitchy stuff came out of nowhere. I really dig it. I love the intermittent vibrato in that lead. No, no, I want more. I keep going. God damn it. That was super cool. Glitchy, nice chords, chop percussion. Just, yeah, that was everything I like in music. This is exactly the kind of stuff that I want to make more of. And it's because it's so much fun to produce and it's so much fun to listen to. Just every single 16th note is packed full of energy and it's fantastic. It's such a joy. My biggest issue with this, and I swear to God, I hear this in so many tracks is the inconsistency of the swing percentage. Cause like you have this glitch hoppy drop, right? Where it's around 50% swing is what I would like guesstimate for this. And then there's this buildup. I don't know if it's like a pre-made drum fill kind of buildup. And the drums are just perfectly lined up with this four by four grid with no swing. And when you have that bass creeping in underneath it with the swing on it, it sounds like everything is just out of time and it's the most frustrating thing ever to my ears. Apart from that and the fact that the intro and build up are a little bit sonically empty, I know this is a demo as so I'm not gonna go in and like critique every aspect of that. This is really cool. Like I love this concept and this idea. I can't wait to see where this takes you. Like when this is done, please send me a link because I, I would love to listen to it. Good vibes, good vibes, all right. Let's move on. Next up, and probably the last for the day, it's like 11 p.m. right now, we got Alva Gracia with Can You Feel? Let's give this a listen. More house, God damn it. This time, I can't find the truth. All right, all right. Nice chord progression. We're in minor, but you've substituted the root for the parallel major. That's nice. Such a lovely sound. Alice does that same thing all the time. I'm trying to think of other songs that do it. There's some chords by Dead Mouse actually. And he does like both the major and the minor. I'm just gonna pause this. Because with some chords by Dead Mouse, you have the bass and it goes like bomb, 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 bomb. And then you have the third. And it goes bum, 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 with that major third on the end there. You know, if I do the fifth too, I can make future Jacob edit this together and make it sound like a chord progression. Bum, 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 bum. Thanks, Jacob, in editing. You're welcome. Anyway, back to the track. That pre-drop vocal chop LFO thing reminds me a whole lot of Ella's. I'm not saying he invented it. It just reminds me of him. I also don't mean to name drop Ellis all the time. I'm just hoping if I say his name enough times, he'll want to collab with me. There's my four to the four kick pattern. I like that you didn't start with that, but that you went for this garage kick. It's a garage pattern. I mean, nice job. This section is super clean. I love the background plug. Oh, cool. Oh man, this soundscape is so lush. I love it. I'm in love with this track. This is so cool. Man, you're making me want to keep going. This is going to be my last one. Damn it. <laughs> right, I'm going to stop it there. We don't have time for more. 
Dude, I don't really have a whole lot to say here. I could hear this in a DJ set, I could hear this in a Spotify playlist, and I wouldn't bat an eye. The mix down is clean and full, the mastering sounds solid even with SoundCloud's awful compression. And the composition is repetitive enough to really sell you on how catchy it is, while also keeping it fresh with variations throughout the whole thing. If there's anything I would like, it might be some harmonic variation, maybe a B section with a new chord progression, something like that. Because right now it's a little too static with the chords in my opinion. Still though, given how short this is, it doesn't really matter, and I think too many chords might even confuse a listener, so who knows. What a track to end on. Man, that was super cool. Good stuff. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to every single one of you who sent me your tracks to listen to. I got way more than I initially expected. So if your track didn't get featured here, you're not alone. Besides, there will definitely be more videos like this in the future. And if you're subscribed to the channel and follow me on Instagram, I might pick you for the next video. Again, thank you so much for watching. It is getting late. I'm getting tired. I'm gonna go to sleep. And I think my camera is about to dice.